Hello, everybody, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today we are finally going to be breaking down and discussing the additional 15 songs that Taylor Swift announced, released, shared with the world at 2 a.m. on April 20th, the Torture Poets, the anthology. We already put out, or I already put out, my reaction video to the I don't even know what to call it, the the official album, the first album, because I guess she has now said it's a double album. Um, I already put out that reaction video. If you want to see my initial reaction to the first 16 songs of the album, you can go and watch that. It's on our channel. But now I'm going to dive in, now that I've had some time to really process, to really listen, because 31 songs is a lot to digest. It's a lot to break down, especially trying to analyze the words, the meaning, all that stuff. So now that I've had some time, we're going to go through these 15 songs. We're going to talk about them very briefly, just some kind of initial thoughts, etc. And then I will, at the end, reveal my favorites of these additional 15 songs. As always, I would love to know your guys' thoughts on these songs, what your favorites are, least favorites. Please share all thoughts and opinions in the comments because what I love most about Taylor Swift albums coming out is the discussion that we can have with each other and how some songs may really work and resonate for me and maybe they won't as much for you and vice versa. So I think that's always a fun part of the Taylor, the Taylor album experience. But let's just dive in to the first song. I don't know, it's hard to explain. I guess it's track 17, um, but it's the first of the extra songs, which is The Black Dog. Now, this is obviously in relation to, or this is this is talking about a specific pub that somebody went to um, in London. And basically, obviously, the song is about noticing that a, per, a previous lover is through and I'm assuming in this in the song she talks about like sharing locations and so I'm assuming she's literally shared her location with this person and she can tell that he's at the black dog and basically it's about trying to figure out why this person doesn't want her anymore um but yet she still sees where he is and she still thinks about him um this song is pretty clearly about maddie healy um she references the band the starting line in this album which is a band that the 1975 has covered ha- maddie has talked about um uh, and then she also there's a line where she says how you don't how you don't miss me in the shower and remember how my rain soaked body was shaking do you hate me and a lot of people feel like and i agree that this is in reference to taylor's rain show that she had in nashville when it was like pouring 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 rain she had to d- delay the show she played at like 3 a.m Maddie Healy was at that show. He was in nashville for that run of shows and so people think that that line is a direct reference to him. I like the song a lot. I think it's really good. I love the visual component of it. My one question is, do we think Taylor Swift actually shares her location with people that she's in relationships with? Because it feels a bit like a security risk to me, but I guess you never know. Um, Okay, moving on to I'm Gonna Get You Back. So this is obviously, this is very, people have brought up this the, the storyline is very similar to Olivia Rodrigo's Get Him Back, which is that I want to get you back like in a relationship sense, but then I also want to get you back. Like I want to get back at you the way that you hurt me in a sense. So it's kind of like, kind of has that double meaning because um, uh, she says, you know, uh, she can't decide whether she wants to smash up his bike or be his wife. You know, it's kind of that back and forth. I feel like this is, again, another nod to Maddie Healy, specifically because of the title and the way that the title, all the words are together. It's very similar to the way that a 1975 title may look. I like this song. I wouldn't say I love this song, but I like this song. I think it's good. And I think it's a song where I'm going to need a few more listens to like fully appreciate it but I like it. Moving on to the Albatross. I really, really like this song a lot. 
this I think is a song about she's she's an albatross in people's lives. She it is difficult for people to be in relationship with Taylor Swift. And she's said this before in various albums and various songs. She mentions that it is difficult to to be in a relationship with her and to um to deal with her because of her of her fame. Um, and I was going to read a specific line that I felt like was very um, uh, apropos. Wise men, wise men once said, while winds are death to the candle, a rose by any other name is a scandal. Cautions issues. He stood shooting the, the messengers. They tried to warn him about her. Basically like, and I feel like, and we don't need to necessarily go through every song and be like, this is about this person or this is about that person. But I feel like this is potentially about Joe in the sense that like, I, when Joe started dating Taylor, it was like, this girl's super famous. She has all these, you know, she, she is, she's in a bit of a scandal right now with like the Kim Kardashian thing. She's not the most beloved, whatever. Like all these kind of like reasons why maybe you shouldn't want to date her. She's all, got all the, the paparazzi lover, X, Y, Z. Um, and basically like at the time he didn't care, but by the time that they broke up, those issues did result in the breakup. So kind of like, despite the fact that they tried, she tried, they, they tried to kind of, I don't know, like make up for it. It still ended up hurting them anyway if that makes sense. But I really like the song. I love the melody. I love the lyrics. It's one of my favorites um, oh, on the album. Okay. Next song is Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus. I was kind of, when I saw like the, the track listing and I saw this title, I was like, what an interesting title. There's a lot of names in this album as song titles, lots of names. Um, I'm very curious about the de decision to choose the name she picked, Chloe, Sam, Sophia, or Marcus. People wonder if this, if these are names of people in Taylor's actual life. We know that Taylor has used Blake Lively's children's names before in songs. Is this, is one of these songs the name of their fourth child, which we still, still don't know their name. Um, there's also seems to be a bit of a reference to Travis Kelsey in the song, um, there's a line that says, and you saw my bones out with somebody new who seemed like he would have bullied you in school, <laughs> which I think the bully at school is probably referring to Travis. Um, and then she also talks about how she had to kind of, or she felt this need to constantly change herself um, in relationships and, uh, and trying to become like somebody that somebody wants, but it never actually works out. So she's, she says, I changed into goddesses, villains, and fools, changed plans and lovers and outfits and rules, all to outrun my desertion of you. Um, which I thought was a really, a really interesting lyric, which I really like. And basically it's just about a bad re relationship. It's about a bad, a bad situation. Um, but obviously now she's moved on to, to somebody new like the song wouldn't say i love this song quite yet but i like it next one is how did it end um i think the title explains the song for itself basically how did this relationship end i think what she's saying with this particular song is she's kind of talking to her fans the media the public because we are all so obsessed. When Taylor and Joe broke up, for example, everybody wanted to know why they broke up. What happened? What's the reason for it? I think, especially when a, a relationship is six years long, people feel like they, they deserve a reason. Like she needs to come out and explain exactly why they broke up. And we all feel this like strange ownership, especially over celebrities when it comes to their personal lives. Like we deserve an, an explanation or an or like an answer. And I feel like this is kind of her response to that in song form. There was a line that made me think it. Um, she says, guess who we ran into at the shops, walking in circles like she was lost. Didn't you hear? They called it all off. One gasp and then 
How did it end? Essentially, basically, everyone gossiping, chattering, asking themselves, like, why did this, why did this end? Why did this end? Um, and, um, and I think at the end of it, and kind of the message is like, sometimes things just end. And like, there's not always like this clear cut, obvious explanation for why something doesn't work out. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. I like this song. Again, I think it's good. It will require some more, um, some more listening to fully process, but I like it. Okay. Next one is so high school. You guys, I am obsessed with so high school. This song is so good. It's my favorite. It's my favorite of the additional 15 songs. I love the guitar at the beginning. I love the melody, the lyrics. And of course, I love the fact that it is about Travis Kelsey. And it is so clearly about Travis Kelsey. Like you can't even, you can't even tell me otherwise. I mean, you have the line about watching American Pie. That's such a Travis Kelsey movie. Touch me while your <laughs> while your boys play Grand Theft Auto. Like that's hilarious. We also know Travis is so close to his friends, so that makes sense. And then the line, you know how to ball, I know Aristotle. Basically, you're great at sports and I'm the smart one, <laughs> which honestly, Travis would agree. And then you have the whole line about him opening up the, the car door for her and how sweet that is. And um, she also says, you know what you wanted and boy, you got her also alluding to like Travis going after her, the you want to marry, kiss or kill me, that whole thing. Like it's just full of these perfectly laid Easter eggs. It's so, it feels good. I think a lot of the album is very heavy. It's a very heavy album. It's an emotional album. There's a lot of intense emotions of anger and, and fear and denial and all the things that Taylor talked about. And I feel like this is kind of this one part of the album. There's a couple other parts, but where there's just like, you can kind of breathe and it's like, ha, ah, and it's just nice. It's just a really nice song. I, I very much enjoy it. Okay, next song is I Hate It Here. <laughs> Relatable. Um, I mean, basically, this song is about like basically needing to disassociate, <laughs> to go away from where you currently are and to go into a different place. The way that I interpreted it is like, when you are going through a difficult time in your life, whether it's a breakup or some other personal situation, sometimes you just need to like, you need to step away from it and go into a different world where you don't have to think about it. For example, she says, I hate it here. So I will go to lunar valleys in my mind when they found a better planet, only the gentle survived. Um, she also says, I'm lonely, but I'm good. I'm bitter, but I swear I'm fine, which is, I think a thing a lot of us also do when we're going through a hard time. Like we try to tell ourselves we're okay. We tell other people in our lives we're okay, but the reality is we're not okay and we're not doing well. Um, I feel like I keep saying like, I like it. I, I like this song. I really like the lyrics of this song. I think it's very, very strong. And um, it's one that I think will grow on me even more over time. Okay. Next we have Thank You, Amy, which is a big one. This is a big one because this is the Kim Kardashian song. Um, she has capitalized the K, the I, and the M. I really like this song as well. I think it is really, really good. And honestly, not because it's about Kim Kardashian. I just think it's a really well-written song. And melodically, I think it's really good. I like the kind of the juxtaposition or, or how she sort of uses the metaphor of a high school bully to kind of compare the Kim situation to what you might go through in high school. I mean, there's so many references to it being about Kim. Um, she talks about the bronze or like the spray tanned statue or something. Um, the, uh, but I, I think the gist of the song and why I think it's like an evolution of other songs that she's written about the situation is she's, I think now at the point in, in her life where she's able to look at it and recognize that she would not be where she is today, both personally, professionally, if that had not happened to her. 
I think it's unfortunate that it did. And I'm sure she wishes she could take it back or that it, it had, had never happened. But like, we would not have gotten reputation had, had that not happened. And like so much of our life and what happens in our life is, is dictated based off of difficult things that we go through. And sometimes the we, we can only get to the best parts of our life once we've gone through the worst parts of our life. And I think through the song, you take, you, you kind of see or, or hear Taylor processing that with everybody else. Like, I hated this experience. My mom wanted you dead. I'm still mad about it, but also, but also I wouldn't be where I am today if this didn't happen. And so in a weird way, she's sort of thanking her for it. Um, which I thought was interesting. I think it's a really, really good song. I don't know if she needed to capitalize the K-I-M in the song title. I feel like we all would have been able to figure out what the song was about if she didn't do that. Like it almost was, it almost was too obvious for me, but I'm, I would, I would love to know if you guys felt the, the same way, but I really, I really like this song a lot. I think it, I think it works Sonically, I think it works. Lyrically, I think it's really, really good. Okay, next one on the list, I look in people's windows, which sounds very creepy. But basically, I think a lot of it is her looking at like what could have been and sort of like observing other people's lives and comparing them almost in a way to her own life. And I think, you know, recognizing that Taylor, she, she can't do a lot of things that other people can do. And her life is going to look a lot differently than other people because of who she is. And I think it's obviously it's relatable and we can understand it from her perspective. I also think it's relatable for us normal folk, because I know for myself, like it's so easy to constantly be looking at other people's lives and what other people are doing and what other people have going on and wishing that you could do those things too. Like the comparison game, we always do it. We, 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 we all do it. Um, and I think it's not always the healthiest thing for us to do because we don't focus in on our own life. Um, I also think it's a bit of like a, like wishing things could have been a different way or wishing things could have turned out a different, a, di- a different way. Um, but ultimately the, the reality is like, we have to stop watching other people's lives. We have to live our own life. So I like the um, analogy, the metaphor with the song. I wouldn't say this is one of my favorites of the additionals, but I really actually love the title because I think it's kind of like a bit, a bit jarring, which I think is sort of interesting. It's like an interesting title. Next song we have is The Prophecy. I love this song. This song is really relatable. It's just very, very, very good. And for Taylor, this song is about her just wanting to be loved, her wanting to be loved and basically saying like, can we change the outcome of my life? Can we change the prophecy of my life? Because all I really want is to just find somebody to love me and to care for me and that will stay with me and stick by my side. And I may have all these other wonderful things in my life, but what I really want most of all is to be loved. And I think it's relatable too for a lot of people. I've been seeing on TikTok a lot of people are saying like, this is the song for the perpetually single girl. (laughs) And I think it is so true. Like you're, you're watching all these other people have relationships, fall in love, whatever, be happy. And you're just like, why can't it be me? Like, why can't I have what everybody else seems to be able to have? So I think lyrically, story-wise, it's so good. And I just think it's a really, really strong song. It's one of my favorites. Um, Okay, Cassandra is another Taylor or a Kim Kardashian potential song. Um, There's a mention of the snakes. She says, so they filled my cell with snakes. I regret to say, do you believe me now? Which the snake motif was very heavy in the early Kim Kanye days. Um, And uh, she also says, which is interesting, which I thought was, I think this also 
proves it's about Kim. She says, when it's burn the bitch, they're shrieking. When the truth comes out, it's quiet. It's so quiet. Which basically I think alludes to when this, when the phone call of Kim and Kanye or Taylor and Kanye first came out, thanks to Kim, everyone was like, Taylor's a snake, commenting snake on, on her Instagram, all that stuff. But then once it actually was revealed that the vi- or that the call was edited, that that wasn't exactly how it, how it went down, like everybody just kind of slinked away. And it's that whole thing of like, everyone has this public outrage initially and are so willing and like ready to cancel people. And then, but then like once a, a different story comes out or like more is revealed, people aren't, people don't want to talk about that. So I like the storyline. I like the song. I think it's good. I need to listen to this one a bit more to fully process, but I enjoy. Peter is the next song. This is definitely an, uh, de- it's definitely um, in reference to Peter Pan um, about, you know, never growing up, never being able to, to grow up. Um, this could be about a real person, maybe Maddie Healy, um, and sort of like, you know, trying to get through to this person who, um, who we, we like want to love so deeply, um, but it just doesn't ever quite work out. Um, here's some of the lines in the song. And, and you said you'd come and get me, but you were 25 and the shelf life of those fantasies has expired. Lost to the, lost to the lost boys chapter of your life. Forgive me, Peter, please know that I tried. Um, basically like, I thought we were going to be together at this one point in our lives. It didn't work out. And like, I tried to be, be with you during that time, but it wasn't there. It, 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 it didn't work. Again, I like the an- analogy. I like the comparison between like the Peter Pan of it all, all that stuff. I think it's a strong song. Um, and I like it. Okay. Just a few more left. We've got the bolter. I think initially when she announced this song, we thought that the bolter was going to be about Joe Alwyn bolting out of the relationship. But in reality, the song is really about Taylor Swift being the bolter um, and leaving. She says, splendidly selfish, charmingly helpless, excellent fun till you get to know her. Then she runs like it's a race behind her back. Her best mates laughed and they nicknamed her the bolter um basically like taylor's always moving on to to the next thing she's always getting on to the next the next part of her career the next part of her life and she's always evolving and and just always changing and i think it's sort of like she's always wanting more which i then think creates these this like pressure within her relationship the line that i think is the most meaningful is she says that as she was leaving it felt like freedom so even though it was very difficult to leave this relationship and it was hard she finally felt free and she finally felt like she could be the person that she wants to be next song we have is robin which is interesting because this is a song where she doesn't actually say the name or the word robin um which I think could be like Robin, like Robin Hood or um, Christopher Robin, Winnie the Pooh. But it's basically a song about youth and about how simple things are when you are young um, and how like being a child is just so simple and life is so simple when you are a kid uh, and how things (laughs) kind of start to go downhill once you grow up. I like this song. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites on the album, but I enjoy it. Finally, the last song we have is The Manuscript, which is basically kind of Taylor looking back on a past relationship with an older person that she probably knows is not is not the best for her. Um, don't want to necessarily speculate as to who that is, but there's lots of people that it, it could be. And kind of her closing the chapter of her life, recognizing that like all these things happen to your life 
for a reason. All these things happen um, to sort of like lead you to the next thing. Um, she says, looking backwards might be the only way to move forwards, which is essentially it's only with time can you look back and realize like why certain things happened and why certain things needed to happen in order to lead you to the next thing. Um, and now the story is shut. That story of her life is complete. And I think ending with this song is really Taylor's way of saying like, this is what's happened in my life. This is the heartbreak I've been through. I'm now ending this chapter and I am sort of ready to move on to the next thing. And I don't need to deal with this anymore. Like I'm, I'm, I'm closing the book on this part of my life, which makes me think this is more of just an, um, an idea I have that I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like over the course of albums, Taylor has like written, she's, she's written about things that maybe happened to her like six months ago, but then she'll also have songs where she's talked about things that happened when she was 18 or 23. Like she'll kind of go back into time and recall certain things. And a part of me wonders if like moving forward with her future albums, if she's not going to do that anymore. Like if she's kind of saying like these stories, these events that happened to me over the last 15 years or whatever it's going to be, that's all in the past. And now I am moving on to future stories and just future things. So obviously time will tell, but that was one of the theories I had. Okay, very quickly before we wrap up, I wanted to share my favorites of the ones of the extra songs. Obviously my favorite is So High School. I love that song so much. Um, I also really love Thank You, Amy. The Prophecy, The Black Dog, and The Albatross. Those are my, I would say, five favorites from the additional 15 songs. Please let me know in the comments your favorites and maybe even the songs you're like not such a big fan of. I feel like for me, and because there's 31 songs on the album, like it is going to take me a lot of time to fully process everything before I can like make my full judgment and my full ranking. Don't worry, I will make a ranking of all 31 songs at some point. I'm sure I will. Um, but I'd love to know your favorites, your thoughts on all these songs, your theories, ideas, what things mean. Like, please share everything with me in the comments below. As always, if you love Taylor Swift, subscribe to the channel so we can talk Taylor 24-7, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!